Greetings! This devotion is for the 5th of April. And our reading for this day, it comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 35 through 49. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool. Do, what do you sow that does not come to life unless it dies? And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. Not all flesh is alike. But there is one flesh for human beings, another for animals, another for birds, another for fish. There are both heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. But the glory of the heavenly is one thing, and that of the earthly is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. Indeed, stars differ from star to star in glory. So what is it with the resurrection of the dead? What is sown is imperishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a living spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth a man of dust. The second man is from heaven, as was the man of dust. So are those who are of dust. At and as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. This is a common question, really, uh, among us humans. You know, what, what happens at death? That, that really very little is, is talked about you know, biblically on that. It, it, this actually is a pretty long piece um, addressing it, but it, it's not typically addressed and, and often is vague. Um, but but what, what will happen at death? What kind of body? What, what will it like? Will I recognize my, my loved ones? And we have a lot of what's and, and, and questions. I think in many ways what Paul tries to explain here is, is much we don't know. But, it, but it, in the end, all of this rests in God's hands. And our challenge, and this is a tough challenge for us, is not to worry but to trust in what God, that God will care for us. That's a tough thing for us, right? And we it, to to do that 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 phrase that let go, let God, right? We like control, but in the end, here control belongs to God. And really, if you think about that, that's a really good thing. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly God, we give you thanksgiving for the risen Christ, for the gift that he so generously and graciously gave us, the gift of life. Help us, dear God, in our lives to embrace the graciousness of the gift without having to know the details. Help us to trust that you love us enough that the glory that happens at heaven is in your hands 
and it will be wildly beyond our dreams. But while we are on this earth, we can celebrate that you have defeated death for us, that you have given us the gift of eternal life, and that we can depend on. Heavenly God, we pray for peace and cooperation in a world, in, in, in our country, that so often seems to be at odds with each other. Help us to understand the differences, see beyond them, and find ways to work together so that all your children may benefit. And dear God, we ask for an end to the pandemic an end to all that it has caused. Most especially, dear God, we pray an end to the virus itself and all the suffering that it has caused. Be with those who are ill and those who have lost loved ones that you would fill them with your comfort. Be with those on front lines, dear God, keep them safe always, dear God, and rush that vaccine to all of your people. It is through Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. Amen.